All right, guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I have the mighty, mighty uh, Shan Sharps It's Go Time Ski in here for some hull damage. It's got a big ass crack. I'm going to show you that. And then I got to do some Super Slick 2000 to the hull. Check it out. So it needs Super Slick for sure. All kinds of beat up. You can see it's completely worn down. But that's no problem. That is the problem. So it's a uh, through hole crack. Now here's the deal. I called Shan and I said, hey man, I can't get to the back of this without having to cut a big hole in it. Which I don't mind doing, but I'd have to basically fix the hole to come in it from the inside. The correct way to fix this is absolutely to come at it from the backside, get it patched on the backside, then patch it from the outside. And then obviously sand it down, um, work it, and then finish it. I can't get to it from the inside. Let me try to get back around there so I can show you what's up. I got a little, got no room in my shop right now. I'm working on this RX uh, TX as well. But anyway, there's no way to get to that crack. You see how nasty it is from the inside. There's a full piece in here that basically this top of the hole has to come off. And then there's another piece in there. And it's probably got foam in it, which I'd have to use a hole saw and drill at least a six inch hole in there uh, to be able to get in there to work. Then I'd have to fix th this crack from the inside and then I'd have to fix this back. So he didn't want to spend that kind of money on an old beat up ski. So we're just gonna do a repair from the outside. So I'm gonna start grinding that down, getting it all cleaned up. I'm going to basically uh, force some expanding foam into that crack so that there's a good backing for me to put some uh, epoxy into. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use uh, an additive to the epoxy. I'm going to thicken it up, some micro balloons, and then I'm going to fill it in there. And it should be hard and really nice um, once it cures. And then I can sand it down and make it look good. But right now, you see how nasty that is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing moved a little bit so I can get it prepped. And then uh, I'll get it knocked out. So I'll bring you back when I've got more to show you. Okay, so I got to working on this other project after I got this thing filled and straight. So um, I just started sanding it, but... I wanted to show you guys what was up before I go into like just leveling it out. Um, so what happened was I got in there with my Dremel and I bored out all the crack, made the crack a little bit bigger and got rid of all the, basically the frayed ends of all the fiberglass and you know, all of, well, this is composite, but um, either way, inside there was all frayed out. So I got in there with the Dremel and I got it all smooth and I uh, got a key down on everything and there was a big gap in there. So I sprayed in some marine spray foam so that there was a backing back there and it oozed out. I let it cure for about 30 minutes and then I cut the foam off and got in there just a little bit where there was a good gap but I had a nice backing in there. And then I filled it with marine Tex and so uh, it is now hard enough to sand. So I'm gonna sand all this down and then uh, apply some fairing compound, get it smooth, and then I'm just going to put some uh, black marine paint right on top just to make it look not super obvious. But I gotta sand it down and get it looking right. But that's kind of where we're at right now. So I'll bring you back in just a bit. All right, guys, we're back working on Shan's ski now. Um, you may remember what this crack looked like before I filled it and sanded it down. Um, 
this is not the repair that I would normally do. However, I can't access the inside without lots of work and more money and all the things. And he didn't want to spend more money. And I, I don't necessarily blame him for this ski situation. Um, when I'm done with this, it's going to be a solid repair. And um, it's going to look the part. It's going to look like the rest of the ski. It'll be fine. Uh, in fact, I'm positive he'll never have a problem with this repair again. So that's kind of where we're at. <clears throat> I'm about to um, put some finishing putty on here, let it cure, sand it down, and then I am going to put a coat of paint on it. So that's it. That's all we got. I might try to shave this down a little bit underneath there. It's been difficult to get to, but same with this. But I'm going to work that a little bit more, and then um, she's getting some paint after the filler. So, time to get back to work. All right, I'm back at work on uh, Shan Sharp's ski today. Um, I got that crack all straight. It's all good. It's flat enough. Um, again, this was kind of a discounted repair, but we wanted to make it a solid one for sure. Um, as I mentioned in the earlier clips, I couldn't get inside. So all I could do was work it from the outside. So I got in there and I ground it all out. I uh, put some foam in there for a good backer. And now it's solid. This is just solid. It should never have a problem again. Um, I reinforced the crack that was underneath here. Filled it really good. The crack went all the way up to here. I got all of that straight. So it's good and it's fixed. Now I just got to throw some paint on it and get the bottom super slicked and she's good to go. So I'll bring you back when I've got more done. All right, guys, the one and only Shan Sharps Yamaha EX is done. Shout out to my boy Mark Foley over there at Devil Dog Service and Repair and Wesley Chatwell. He's in Dade City now. It says Wesley Chapel, but um, he's in Dade City. But um, anyway, so... As you guys saw before, I got took care of a scratch, or <laughs> a big crack on his ski. It was right there. So I fixed the scratch, or scratch, the big crack. I fixed the crack um, last week or so. And uh, this thing, well, I fixed the crack. And then I decided, since I have to do the super slick anyway, that I would do the super slick after I f did the repair because I super slicked over it. So normally you wouldn't put super slick that high because uh, it doesn't have any UV uh, protection in it. But since this uh, overhang is so big and all the way around, uh, I think it'll be fine. But this adds another layer of uh, structure or rigidity to the repair so really you'd never you'd be hard-pressed to know that that's been repaired at all in fact once he gets it out there he probably won't ever have a problem with it again so um, I did the repair only from the outside not because I don't know how to do fiberglass work but because if you know anything about these EXs that's being replaced. <laughs> there's a there's a panel in there, and there's no way to access uh, the inside of the hull without using a uh, big old hole saw and getting in there. And then I'd have to make the repair on the interior. Then I'd have to fix all that back there. So I talked to Shan, and I was like, "Look, I can fix this thing right, no problem. It's going to be." X amount of dollars. However, given the age of the ski, the shape of the ski, and the, I mean, it's a base model, it's an EX, um, given the sheer value, if you will, of the situation, I didn't feel like I had to go inside to give him a good repair. So I offered him another option. And the other option was just to basically fix it from the outside. So um, just to run you real quick through what happened with the repair, and I'll put a picture in of the repair right here. All 
All right, so I used my Dremel and I drilled it all out. I ground both sides of it, made the hole a little bit bigger. Then I sprayed some marine expanding foam in there and I let it come out so that I'd have a backing to put in. Uh, on this particular repair, I used Marine Tech's uh, Rapid Set first. <clears throat> I put that in, I still, I left it for 24 hours, I came back, I sanded it down, I then applied more Marine Tech's on top of that, left that for 24 hours, came back, sanded it down, then I used, um, it's a 3M uh, finishing putty, uh, just to make sure it was flat as I could get it. And it looks pretty good. Can't really tell. Pretty flat. I had to build up this bottom area a little bit. You can see a little bit of an area where there's a, a bunch of product. I couldn't do a lot with it was, was the problem. All right, so there's a little build up right here where there's uh, a little bit of extra uh, putty, but that's okay. I wanted the additional because that crack came down into that body line. Anyway, so it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the Super Slick went really well as well. Uh, as usual, I use 32 ounces of product. Um, what I do is I'll do the whole ski and then between those two tracking marks, that one and that one, I do a whole nother super thick coat right down the middle. So this guy got the works and the hole is fixed and the super slick all for my boy Shan Sharp. If you guys know him, you know he's an awesome guy. Super personable, wants to be everybody's buddy. Um, and uh, I appreciate him not only for being a buddy of mine, good buddy of mine for years we've been friends, uh, but al also he trusted me with his baby to take care of it and this this ski may not seem like a lot to some but it is an accomplishment to even own a ski um this thing has been through the ringer he uses this thing and if you don't follow shan sharp on uh youtube or instagram or whatever you should he if you're into skis there is no guy better to talk to better to be friends with or any of that in the in the ski community than Shan. Uh, just an all around good dude. And trust me, I don't take the time to just start bragging about people I don't know. Um, but Shan is a good dude and I appreciate him and I appreciate his business just like I do everyone else's business. Um, but his ski is done. If you want your ski super slicked, I charge $600 for black, just like you see. I charge $700 for any other colors. Um, usually the turnaround time is one overnight, depending on my workload that week. Um, I can usually get these in. They have to hang overnight to dry and all of that before I can put them back on a trailer. That's why I need them for the overnight. Um, but they take me, I don't know, around six to seven hours to uh, do a super slick job. So it's a, it's a good day worth of work. And then, I mean, mainly because you've got to remove most of what's there, uh, if not every single bit of uh, substrate prior to applying the super slick. So anyway, uh, if you want super slick, uh, that's what I charge. Turnarounds uh, usually just one overnight depending on the workload and uh, this is what you can expect a solid quality even job with lots of material protecting your investment if you want to uh, schedule either a detail or want to schedule a super slick 2000 my cell phone number is 813-846-4406 my shop here is in uh, holiday florida and I'm mobile for most things, definitely not for super slick, mainly because I've got to lift it off the trailer and I can't take that stuff with me. It's such a pain, no way. So anyway, if you need it done, you got to bring it to my shop on holiday. If you need me, let me know. Again, my name is Gary Dean. Check out detailjuice.com for all your detailing product needs. And if you need me, let me know. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.